All right, welcome back everyone. So, this is my uh, Grady White uh, Seafair 228G. Um, it's got a 1999 Yamaha Saltwater Series 2 um, fuel injected two stroke. And um, I have been very, very pleased with the performance and the power of this motor. I also don't think it does too bad on gas. It's not as good as a four stroke by any means, but it's not as bad as a carbureted. And it starts and runs just like a fuel injected. It had a overheating issue in the past. Did new water pump. I did new um, thermostats at that time. Cleaned out the water passages. I did um, new, I, I took the, the heads off, the water jacket, um, cleaned out the, the water passages that were through. They were caked up with uh, marine growth, which if you're anywhere in the salt, you're gonna get marine growth. Um, cleaned all that out. <coughs> um, and um, it ran great for a, another couple of years. So this year, whenever I came out to get it ready for the season, you know, just, just fire it up. I like to do that once a month during the winter time. Um, I fired it up and it gave me an overheat alarm. So when it gave me an overheat alarm, took out my uh, thermometer. You can just get you a thermometer like this. Um, and then you can check your cylinder temperatures as it's going. And you can also check the temperature on your thermostat to see if it's opening or closing. It's, a, I mean, a decent indication. This one was way cooler than it was for the other side so um you know i knew that it was it was sticking and it wasn't uh it wasn't opening up all the way so i went ahead and ordered the parts and i've got a new thermostat i've got a new pressure high pressure poppet valve um, that is uh, also used in the cooling system um, and we're going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and pull these thermostats off, pull out this high pressure poppet valve, and we're going to end up uh, replacing those items. And then I'll show you uh, steps along the way. All right, let's go ahead. And it's a good idea to put some non C's on anything that is touching salt. In the presence of salt water, it's going to create galvanic corrosion. So it's a good idea to coat your coat your stuff down with some um, some sort of lubricant to prevent it from doing that. Let me tap it. Not worried about this gasket. I have, I have a new gasket. It's relatively clean. Let's see if you can see this here. It's relatively clean. Um, it's been this way since uh, I think I did this in 2019. So that's not bad. Little tiny pieces here and there that have gotten clogged up, but um, really nothing for you know the most part. Same thing with your thermostat here. This one, O-ring looks like it's in good shape. I can tell you this is, I think, two years old. I actually have the date uh, in my phone on when I replaced it. Um, so it's not in bad, sh not in bad shape, um, but for $25 and your ability to not overheat on the water, you know, for me it's worth it if I'm having overheating issues to go ahead and get that thermostat replaced. Um, I have a new gasket as well, so new gaskets are coming on. These really aren't in bad shape. They could be cleaned up, um, scrub this salt off, and then this would be ready to go. Um, and it would probably work just fine, but I'm going to go ahead and replace them. Just using a little Allen wrench here to scrape these passages. 
I can tell you, two years ago, whenever I did this, they were extremely corroded. Even though, as long as I had had it, which at that point I think it only been about two years, um, it um, was something that you routinely do is flush your motor. Anytime you come out of salt, you flush your motor here on the coast. Um, it's maybe not necessary every time if you're on fresh water on a lake, but anytime you're dealing with salt, you need to flush your motor and you also need to rinse your boat, rinse your trailer. You need to do it all. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, what I'm gonna do next here is, behind this cover, is when in doubt, impact it. I don't want to mess up these screws. Okay. All right, back here behind this uh, wiring harness is the absolute best place Han or uh, Yamaha could have put this thing. But it is right back here. Let's get you in here. So right back here is the high pressure poppet valve. So we're gonna undo that and we're gonna take that out and go ahead and replace it. All right, you can see that just came popping out of there because it's under pressure. It's got a spring. All right. And it has this poppet valve that goes in there. So this is what I'm going to replace. Yeah, everything, it's not, it's not too corroded. So um, I, I want to take a look at, and we'll look at the new spring compared to the old spring. If you look here, this is the new spring. This is the old spring. So you can see it's already, it's a quarter inch this one's longer, so obviously, I don't think I stretched it out, but it is stretched out, so I don't know if, feel what the tension is. It's definitely got less re, uh, tension on it than the other. All right, so now that we've got the puppet valves, I'm going to move this um, wire loom guard out of the way. I think I remember the last time I was messing with this that I did that. Took this out and it was a lot easier to get to it. So, the way that your cooling system works on the majority of these outboards is you have your you have your pickup down at the bottom comes up goes up through you have your thermostat up here when that thermostat opens 
it completes the circuit and the water then flows along these cylinder heads. There's passages on the inside that are similar to these passages that are that are over here. So it goes down and it goes around these cylinder heads and keeps them at the proper temperature, then comes out. Uh, you have your telltale is what underneath here is a is a tiny little hole that is connected to a tube that it, it pours out there. Then the rest comes out the exhaust and on out through the hub exhaust uh, down here. If you want to flush these things, I can I can tell you I have used I think it was called red lime or something along those lines, and I took this lower unit off um, and got an electric um, bilge pump, connected it to the pickup tube, and ran that red lime. I think is what it is called, and it goes up through and then it flows and comes back down through. So it goes up through, flows through, and that pump pumps it. And I let it do that for like 24 hours, and then I would say for the first six hours I was getting lots of fizzing going on down in the um, in the um, bottom of the um, tote that it was doing and I thought that was going to work but it did not work um, to get rid of the marine growth so the only way that I found to get rid of the marine growth was to take these cylinder heads off take the water jackets off take the take that out take the thermostats off take everything and get it open and then scrape all that out and then put it all back with new gaskets torque it all down to spec do all of that and um, then it runs good it ran perfect after that and it ran good for three years and I've never had an overheat issue since then until just last month during the winter time which it could have just been some corrosion is all that is built up on that thermostat and it would probably be fine but um, I don't like to to be out on the water and end up stuck that is not fun so I took and I'm gonna you know do it as a part of my yearly maintenance this year is go ahead and chase change those out change the um, high pressure uh, pop it valve out and um, you know I'll be I'll be good so back to where we were at so I moved this wire loom out of the way and that gives you a little bit more room here to be able to get the um, to get the spring back in there with the, the poppet valve um, you know back in the thing I want to check this gasket see if I can I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to get to that gasket here, I'm going to mess with this and I'll bring it. Alright, so I got the spring in there and I got the little plastic valve piece that goes in there. And I'm trying to get this started. I need to get a couple threads in there so it'll hold it in place. I think I got it. There we go. Then I'll throw in the other side. Let's see if you can see that there. You may or may not be able to see that. Okay. But I can see it. So, okay. Alright, I was able to get those started. Alright, so. Got that on there. I'm not torquing them down yet, I'm just getting them getting the slack out of the out of the threads
Push just until it touches and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to torque it, uh, torque it down. All right, let's get, uh, get this one off now. All right, about the same here. You can kind of see it's got a little bit of corrosion um, built up in it, but overall this is not bad um, compared to um, the past. So gonna get this cleaned up. Not too bad, but why why risk it, right? Whenever I first pulled this off, this was completely clogged. Um, a couple of years ago. Okay, so we got it cleaned up. Here's the cover as well. Um, we got a Yamaha Yamaha thermostat and a Yamaha thermostat. Uh, cover our gasket so um, putting in a putting in the thermostat here pop on the gasket Back on. Not applying grease to these because they still have grease from the last time I was in here. As long as you're doing routine maintenance to your outboard, you know, doing these type things, changing out your water pump, changing out your thermostats every couple of years that type of stuff it won't get uh, corroded um, this engine's got a little bit of corrosion on it for one it was you know it was almost uh, 20 years old when we got it but the last year I put it in a marina put the boat in a marina for a little over a month and the amount of corrosion definitely increased what I usually like to do is take and wipe everything down with WD-40 and a wet, uh, you know, like a WD-40 soaked rag, um, spray it off and you can get this corrosion and you can put like a film of either um, WD-40 or CR-656 um, I think is what it's called and that stuff works really, really good um, and it it does excellent for um, keeping the corrosion at bay. All right, I'm gonna do the other side and then I'll uh, bring you back whenever I get ready to torque them. All right, so Honda or uh, Yamaha says you go um, one, two, three, four is the order. There's little stamps that are printed in there um, and then you According to the manual, torque it on the first pass to 3.6, second pass to um, 8 pounds. Alright, same thing on the other side. Alright, since I got those uh, torqued down, um, before I put the cover back on, I wanted to try to clean up some of this uh, motor. Anywhere I see corrosion I'll take care of it and then I'll wipe it down with uh, WD-40. Alright next I'm going to end up changing out the uh, water pump uh, down here and um, I wanted to show you guys the um, the difference it'll make once the water pump has been changed out. So I'm going to go ahead and kick the water on. I'm going to kick the unit on and then uh, you'll be able to see the stream and then I'll do it 
or I'll change it out, then you'll be able to see it on the back side how much more water volume you're getting. Um, I was thinking that my water pump needed to be changed out uh, because of it had a reduced flow and my thermo it was also getting hot um, so I wanted to, to kind of do an overhaul on my cooling system but the water pump I think I replaced it two years ago um, but it really doesn't have a lot of hours on it and once I changed out the thermostats and the poppet valve, that pressure increased immensely. So um, it looks like either the restriction was with the uh, thermostats or with this uh, poppet valve. So I'm gonna leave well enough alone. It's running low temp and um, it's not gonna have any issue at all cooling. So um, if, there's a, if there's an issue that arises, I'll know what I need to do next, but I'll save that water pump for another you know, get another season out of it. Um, I, I have complete confidence that it's not gonna overheat. Um, but I have not changed out my fuel filter in a little while, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this fuel filter changed out. So this is a lock that um, um, holds the fuel filter in place uh, so that it doesn't open up on you and I'm gonna take that out of the way. All right, let's take a look at this. I've never had issues with fuel um, being clogged or getting water in it because I do change my water fuel separator every year and um, this ring that is here is supposed to float if there is water in your fuel. So it's supposed to float, which you can see that if, I can't tell if that's a shadow now, I gotta look at that. Um, I'm gonna pour this in a jar and uh, let me grab a jar real quick and then we'll take a look at it in a jar. It's real easy to see there. I can't tell if that's a shadow or if there is a tiny little bit of water in there. Um, there might be a little bit here. Uh, so let me grab a uh, jar and then we'll take a look at it. All right. So there was not uh, water in the fuel. It was just a shadow. So I went ahead and dump that. And I'm going to clean up my seat ring. I guess that's what you would call this. Just um, cleaned up my bowl. Yeah, that sediment, sediment's on the outside. Okay. Got that. And then have a replacement for the fuel filter. Alright, when you get your kit, the red ring comes, it's part number that, okay, and your fuel filter is part number that. Alright, you're going to pop it in there. Put it it's set up on a spring at the bottom to where it'll spring up on you. I'm going to go ahead and clean the O-ring. OK. 
Okay. Okay, and tight. Gonna match that up there. Back on. And that locks it in. Fuel pumps or uh, fuel filters replaced. All right, peace of mind is uh, worth its weight in gold. So I was gonna skip changing out the uh, water pump. I'm confident, really, that there's nothing wrong with it. But I looked back at my records, and it was September of 2018 that I last replaced it. They're good for about 300 hours, according to Yamaha, and that's about where I'm at. So. Um, because we average about 100, 100 hours a year or so. So I wanted to change it. So let's continue on. All right, it's a 14 millimeter on these. So there's also one underneath here. You'll need an extension to get to it. Broken, uh, that is not a 14 millimeter. Looks like a 12. Let's try a 13 first. Yeah. So whenever I do a lower unit, um, one of the things I like to do is I like to take out the bolts except for one and leave one bolt in there that is going to hold it up. So I'll leave this one in so that way it doesn't come down until you're ready for it to come down. As I was going through uh, looking at the maintenance guide for uh, the Yamaha, um, you know, I did a little bit more research on that poppet valve. And last year it was given me, so if I bumped it in gear, and you know, bump it in gear, like if you're in a marina, it's, it's, it's a good idea to be able to just bump it in gear so you can move really slow and maneuver as you go through it and the um, if I sat there with it bumped in gear for a couple of minutes the overheat alarm would go off but as soon as I would kick the RPMs up it would go away and that is a another clear indicator that that poppet valve was going bad so it was going bad at the end of last year and then sitting through the winter um, this year um, is whenever I went and fired it up, you know, this last month, it was, that was the, that was the problem. All right, so after you've gotten these out, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get this one out.
And as we're doing it, you can already see, if you look right down here, you can already see the gap is starting to open up. So, see there, long bolt, it's going to go there, there's one that comes down through the top there that holds that anode plate. My other socket. Okay, so now we're going to lower it down, so I'm going to back you up here, lower it down. And we'll have this one that is holding it. Pressure's already on this one down here. So I'm going to lower it. See the gap is starting to separate already. I'm gonna lower it a little bit more so it's already okay. All right. So the, the gap has already opened up, so I know that it's gonna come out now, um, and I'm gonna get a helper to help me slide this thing out now. All right, so I raised it up, back up into position to where I can now pull it out. Um, usually if you need to help put some weight on it to help get it separated, you can do that. It came apart fairly easy. Part of that is keeping everything greased up. So we're gonna go ahead and pull it off now. I'm gonna go ahead and start getting the thing off. It's not gonna fall. We'll get this off and then we'll look at the next step. All right, so I've got this uh, Yamaha repair kit. I'm sure this one goes to many different of these larger outboards. Um, I would almost say this is mid-size outboard anymore because I got them all the way up to, I think a 500 now or a 450 I've seen. So, kit comes with a new O-ring. Looks like it comes with new pens. Obviously a new impeller. Comes with new uh, bolts. New cup. New gaskets. And a new wear plate. This is a stainless steel, stainless steel wear plate. So. When you get the full kit, you get everything that you're going to need to uh, replace it. So, looks like a 12 millimeter. There it is. All right, so as this is coming up, I want to take a look. Let's 
see if there's anything. You can see we got an O-ring here. Then we got another O-ring. This O-ring you can see was pinched. So that was a good idea that we were replacing that. And this is the orientation that I was telling you about here. When you when you pull it up, your fins go a certain way, depending on if it's a um, a right rotation or left rotation, or they call it a counter rotating um, motor, depending on which way it goes. A lot of times, if someone has um, separated a set that was a dual outboard setup, one motor spins one way, one motor spins the other, and then if you end up buying a used one, you could end up with a counter rotating motor. So it's a good idea to keep an, um, you know, keep a track of what rotation your um, your impeller was spinning. Okay. You'll need this when you go to put your uh, new water pump on. Not sure, but it is one of the com more common things to fail. So um, you want to make sure that you retain it just in case your new kit doesn't come with one or you lose it. Get out of there. All right, I am going to get some grease and uh, get some paper towels, get this cleaned up, and then we'll start assembling it. All right. Put a little bit of grease on the inside here, and then I'm definitely going to grease up the outside whenever I go to um, put it inside the cup. All right. So
Well, guys, I think I'm going to wrap it here. I think it's good to uh, to last another season. So, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you like the content. And remember, you can't fix anything if you ain't out there turning wrenches.